And good morning, everybody. Welcome to FSU Coach Live. My name is Tim Bankhurst. Joined this morning by a special guest, Sean Mason. He's an American Ninja Warrior athlete and coach. Sean, thanks so much for, for being with us today. If you wouldn't mind, just tell us a little bit about your history and how you got into to Ninja Warrior. Yeah, thank you, Tim. Uh, the honor's mine. I'm super thankful for this opportunity. I was very excited. Um, got into Ninja Warrior back in the day, uh, watching all the series, of course, when it first started. Uh, super elementary, super basic, but of course, it's like, man, this is a sport based on playground equipment and playing. And um, I'm a I'm a kid at heart, so of course, um, playing just like any other sport, you want to go do, um, um, you want to go have fun. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh dang, um, this is super challenging. Um, so after watching the show, I uh, got an opportunity to go down to Houston, stand in the walk-on line, and then I got to run the show. Uh, before that, kind of uh, what's got me in athletics, I uh, bust out this picture. I think it's super funny. See if we can get this action. Oh, nice. Uh, that's Van Damme so, up there. Van Damme. I was going to say, that's what started it all. Jean-Claude Van Damme in the 80s and 90s was my childhood. And uh, obviously they're horrendous movies, but uh, they inspired me to be athletic. I love the way he moved. Um, so that's what really started my love and passion for athletics was just movement. And um, and today, on uh, Conor McGregor rekindled that. I love the way he moves. Win, lose. The, of course, I love his uh, I love his confidence and all that. But just movement. And that's what started my passion was the way Jean-Claude Van Damme would move and the way he worked so hard. And even though the movies went on and clearly he was aging, he still looked really clean on his movements. So um, that's what really started it all. And then the show came along and I'm like, oh, dang, look at this movement. Super fun in a, in a uh, playground setting. And that's what got me going with the uh, Ninja Warrior. So you, you transformed this, though, from kind of a – a hobby of, of something you just enjoy doing into into a business. I mean, it's what you do for a large part of your day now. Can you describe how that happened and what made you make that decision? Because it's a big decision. Uh, yes, sir. Absolutely, it was. Um, kind of give a little more history in the backdrop to bring that uh, bring us up to where to answer that question in full. Um, like I said, Van Dam started it and started my love for uh, for movement and athleticism. Then I served a mission in the Philippines, and for two years, I just served people. Mm. And I loved it in a third world country setting. It really, really, you know, all your all your troubles and all your so-called stresses or first world problems go away when you're surrounded in a third world country with real issues. Yeah. And I lost myself into that work, and I fell in love with those people, which are so easy to love. That's when I'm like, you know, I love doing this, especially the kids. And I'm a crier, so I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> But um, that made me just really love um, helping any way I could. So you take the athleticism and then you take my love to help. And, and, and the answer to that equals coaching. Mm. Love people. You want to teach and share. The beautiful thing about coaching is whatever you put in, you're getting 100 back, right? I mean, it's always, it's kind of like, hey, I'm going to be the teacher today. Well, you always get more than you give. And that's what I love about coaching. And so my love for people then coupled with this um, love for movement. Um, then I came back and a um, few years go down the road, Ninja Warrior. And I'm like, oh, this is the perfect marriage for me. Now, talking about uh, setting up your business, describe what you do. Like, what what is your coaching day how do you work do you own your own facility uh, give us a little bit more details because i know a lot of people may be interested in hey you know what i don't want to go the traditional route of being a coach in a sport that's well known a football baseball and so on there's a lot of smaller niche market sports where you can have a career and you can be successful so what have you done to to actually ensure that you get paid so to speak uh, thank you. Good question. Yeah, there's um, so the beautiful thing about Ninja Warrior is it's basically if a kid plays, 
then it's easy to build a clientele. And what kid doesn't want to play? Mm -hmm. Especially now when you look, um, me growing up in the 80s, playgrounds were way different than they are now. And the great thing about Ninja Warrior is that's coming back. So it's real easy to sell. Speaking of marketing, it's easy to sell. Let's go play on a really nice, super padded bells and whistle playground. So uh, when it comes to capitalizing, uh, capitalization of it, the marketing, it's real easy because literally you need to set up a place where kids can come and play. And by doing that, if someone loves it and someone's having fun, then they're going to come back. I mean, it's the easiest formula in the world. Um, right now, it's super easy because there happens to be a very popular television show. And for that demographic that aspire for that, that's you know, icing on the cake, because then that naturally forms their plans of, hey, I want to be on the show. So um, you know, um, answering that question in full, too, I'm looking at my notes. I'm ADHD, which is an which is an incredible gift, except for when it comes to I'm going to see a lot of squirrels. So just bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in my, and, and I think that really makes it makes it easy for the kids to relate to me because I'm literally a 42 year old kid that wants to go play. Um, La Sierra, uh, John F. Kennedy. This is a huge, I mentioned Van Dam. This is the thing that really cemented this for me. La Sierra, the 1962 JFK initiative. If you watch that, you see this incredible group of Americans mm -hmm. that represent the most ideal uh, body composition, body movement, you know, I like the question, I don't care if you can bench press 300, can you get over the fence, right? And we've lost a lot of that. I'm not saying benching 300 is not important for whatever sport application you need, but getting over the fence really helps. So um, La Sierra, and looking at this initiative that JFK had, takes this, and they had nunchuck alley. They had pegboard. They had parallel bars. Um, all these calisthenic movements and you look at these bodies and they literally are just ideal mm -hmm. and it's all based on body movement and that's the foundation. So with the JFK initiative, Ninja Warrior for me is literally just um, marketing and making the JFK a fun game show because there's no difference. There's very little difference except they add that ingredient of super fun to it, the bells and whistles of a game show. And wow, what kid doesn't want that? Mm. Now, when we when we look at something like that, and by the way, if, if you're watching now or, or later, YouTube, what Sean was just talking about, and you can see some videos of, of how this was done back in the day, so to speak. But you you have a group of kids who enjoy doing movements right yeah. swinging jumping uh you know pulling whatever and and yet a parent and in, in today's american society a lot of parents will say well where's the scholarship you know I, I you know is there a scholarship at the end of this road because i'm investing a lot of money in my child's athletic performance sure fun sure health and you know healthy uh environment training them and all these things but you know, a lot of parents look to the college and say, you know, I, I kind of want my son or daughter to get a scholarship to help pay their way. I'm not saying that's the right mindset, by the way. I'm saying that that's a mindset that a lot of people give. Yes. So how do you how do you respond to that when a parent's like, I'm not sure I want to put my son or daughter in your program, recognizing there may not be a quote unquote future? Um, Dr. Varghurst, that's probably uh... No offense to anyone else, but that's my favorite question. <laughs> that's my favorite question because that, besides seeing the joy on a kid's face when he gets something, right? Besides the, my, my kid's never been, they haven't found their sport and now they found Ninja. Oh my gosh. And then you see their confidence go through the roof, right? The I fail, 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 got it. Celebrate that small victory, go crazy, super exciting. Then the reality hits, is this just play, right? So I want to mm -hmm. answer that in two folds. One, parents are seeing that, like, for instance, I have a young lady and her mom, uh, Jennifer Munholland, came and told me this season 
that her home runs have gone up exponentially. Uh, obviously, we're Oklahoma, so we're known for wrestling, and we're definitely known uh, for um, – uh, gymnastics and women's softball. The World Series is here every year. So softball's huge. It's basically, especially if you're a female, what can Ninja do for my softball athlete? And all, especially for back pull, because we're a pull dominant sport, it has increased her power and her batting average and home run exponentially. And it was super exciting. So Yes, and I'm going to get to the um, scholarship port in a minute because that's a huge passion. But you look what it does. Even though this is a sport, you look at all the side benefits to it. You look at your home run average. You look at your hand-eye coordination. You look at the explosive power that Ninja requires and how that translates. Most importantly, everyone says it's grip dominant. It's really not. It's core dominant. It's not just sagittal, it's every plane known to man. Uh, frontal, horizontal, explosive at a 45 degree angle up, 78, 80 degree up, all these, and, and your core and your hip flexors is what are what create that. Well, guess what? Those are huge in swinging the bat. Um, so you take an amazing core, and I would definitely argue, if we don't have the best cores, we're gonna be close. Because Ninja, the, the demands placed on the core is, is exceptionally high. And that transfers straight over to whatever sport. And I get so much feedback from parents ever since I started Ninja. My kid's doing so much better in this, this, that, and that. So you get secondary and tertiary results, even though their primary sport's that. They're going to get hooked up a lot from this. So that's Now, next. We just started the OKNA. I literally just got my R my EIN from the IRS, and I'm super excited. And it's called the OKNA, the Oklahoma Ninja Academy. Because growing up, I would have not been able to participate because Ninja is kind of high. It's kind of like golf. You got to have a private membership, basically. You can go to open gyms, but they're specialized facilities. It's expensive to have those type of things set up. So for me, I'm like... Um, I wouldn't have been able to do this. And I know there's a lot of people in the community that can't. And for me, my passion and goal is I want ability to be the only factor of whether a kid excels or not, not circumstance. And of course, we've all had this. So we started the OKNA and we're going to implement this and, and start taking it to the school systems. Awesome. And then we feel and hope that by integrating in this to the school systems that accept that, totally funded by my private um, um, nonprofit that we're starting, hopefully to grow into, and, and then um, recognition will start to come. And ideally, within the next five to 10 years, I, I really feel within five years, I think that we can get a sanctioned in-school program I do know that the UNAA ran out of New Mexico by um, Bob, who's amazing. He is with the OCR, and they are penciled to get OCR Ninja Warrior into the 2028 Olympics. He's done a wow. lot of work with that. Wow. That'll be another step where Ninja will actually be recognized as an organized sport instead of just a fancy television show. So I feel it's coming. I really want to make those connections to expedite the process so that not only their home run percentage goes up or their batting average goes up, but yes, it's an option as well for Bill or Sarah to also get a scholarship based on Ninja. So I love that question. I could go days on that. <laughs> okay. Hopefully. Well, we do, we do have a question in the chat box and it's from Jim Douglas. Um, do you track the performance of someone you're coaching against the performance of the sport they're doing your training to improve for, such as basketball performance before, during, and after your coaching? So, in other words, you know, you your parent says, hey, my son is much stronger or much faster. Do you do any metrics to, to measure their, you know, long jump or or sprint speed or anything like that so that you can show that your training program is improved? Um, I want to implement metrics. Jim Douglas, I appreciate that question. As of right now, I do not have any recorded metrics. Um, it's time consuming. 
It, it is. Plus, I mean, we're pioneering this sport. So there's going to be like, like that question right there immediately made me think I almost like, okay, let's stop the interview. I got to go take notes and write this. <laughs> right there. Because if, it, if there aren't metrics and there's not proof, then okay. It's just me talking. Right. Right. Um, and someone saying, yeah, it's Ninja, but um, I'll definitely start implementing those. Um, because when I started, you're not thinking, um, or I was thinking this is going to help everything else because, uh, I've been a golfer my whole life and I, I would occasionally drive cause long, long, uh, drive is hosted every year. Windstar for the last four years here, um, 30 minutes. That's where I work actually at Windstar as well. And, um, I would, uh, go out there and drive and I can still hit the golf ball over 400 yards. And I'm more consistent to get one over 400 based on my ninja as well. So for me, I've also personally experienced just the core of the back and the lower legs moving through in that. Um, but yeah, Jim, I definitely need to do a better job and start doing more metrics so that, that there's proof behind what I'm seeing. And, and you, uh, sorry to interrupt. If you no, do no. have a question for, for Sean, get it in the chat box and we'll, we'll try to get it on to him. I want to kind of get away from the, the business side of it now and, and focus a little bit more on, on coaching Ninja Warrior athletes. And, and you obviously were, was one yourself. Um, are you still competing? Um, the show is based on application. I am competing, uh, on the show. No, sir. I didn't get accepted this year. Um, I didn't get accepted last year either. It's, uh, honestly, I'm a super boring guy. I really am. At least I know I am. So they're uh, looking for characters. Is that what you're saying? No, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I've not been selected. I got to compete because I walked online, but here's the deal. At the end of the day, I truly am a coach first and athlete second. The only reason I wanted to be on the show and when I got on the show uh, in Houston was I'm like, you know what? This gives me validity and sets an example. And I failed. Clearly, I didn't win it. But it at least my kids and the kids I coach could be, wow, Coach Sean made it. And all I wanted is just to give a little more inspiration. Hey, I did it middle-aged white guy, 42 years old, <laughs> a dad, and I got it. Come on, guys, we got this. And and that, to me, was the biggest success. So for me, I get to sit back and be coached because I've had five athletes be on the show, including my daughter, who just appeared. So um, the first one that was on the show with me was Darren Fagan. Then I had Matt Holt, then Cody Huckel, who was on there twice, and then my daughter, Addison. So we've had Four athletes, five appearances, and me would have been the sixth appearance. Awesome. So I do compete, though. There's other levels. There's UNAA, and there's NNL, and there's a few others that are coming and just came out. So I compete on a national level on that. Yes, sir. Uh, another question came in the chat box from Mickey Fox. So in a world that's quick to skip over the basics and head straight to the tricks, how do you instill in the kids that technique that's imperative and the proper strength that's needed when that takes longer than, than they want. So how do you keep their interest? That's a great question. That is uh, everyone, everyone wants to do the 360 dunk. They, they don't really care about the layup first, right? So um, everyone wants that ridiculous, insane vertical at the combine without doing all the jumps and the power lifting to get there. Uh, it's the same with Ninja. So what's flashy in Ninja is the salmon ladder, right? It's it's what's really been a great marketing tool for the show, the warp wall. Uh, and then Lache. Lache is basically me ripping through a bar and flying through the air with my hands to grab onto another object. Mm. So that's the high flying fancy fun. Coach, how can I get the salmon ladder? Coach, how can I get the Lache? Mickey, I love that question. And maybe I'll reference Mike Boyle. What I know today might be wrong. <laughs> Always looking for what we know that's better tomorrow. And honestly, I have a few answers to that. And I'm still looking for that right answer because everyone does want to come in and they can skip the foundational basics to get that. And what is what does that end up? It ends up with a lot of injury yeah. and uh, retraining protocol. And we just started. or massive attrition and you never get them back. 
So is it a case of educating the parents and the kids that this is a process? I mean, if, if I take my son into a dojo, you know, hey, let's do a trial, what's the first thing they do? They get to break a fake board, right? Oh, look, I was successful, I can break a board. Uh, is it just a case of educating all those involved in that you're not gonna break a real board yet? It takes time. It is, and what we did to, to answer your question and Mickey's at the same time, we recognized this a few years ago that everyone wants to flash the excitement, the homework and the work, right? When you look at the most successful people in the world and they really attribute everything they have to work, even the most naturally talented people and we as coaches know, no, that's the it factor. They're like, uh, yeah, I got the it factor from 30 million hours of working on the it factor, right? Um, on the 30 millionth three-point three, three, uh, three, three shot, then Steph Curry is draining them from 50, right? So work, 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 work. Well, for a kid, you have to systematically progress that in a fun way. So we created, we created a progression and we named it after martial arts or aligned it in their same progression. So you have a white, a gray, a, a yellow, an orange, a blue, green, purple, red, black. And what we did is we made it fun for them to get that yellow bracelet. And by the time they get to the green bracelet, now they can lache. Now they can do the salmon ladder. So what I would suggest, Mickey, is take a, and I know Mickey personally, she's one of the greatest human beings you could ever meet. She's, she's incredibly talented, great mom, uh, great coach. She's incredible. She's a dance instructor here in town and she's incredible. So what, what I would do is you take, and I'm not gonna even try to speak dance lingo, <laughs> you take whatever is difficult and you make these progressions that make it fun so that when they get that first progression, there's that reward system, and then they can celebrate that first step reward system knowing that step five or six is that salmon ladder and they still feel that they're getting there and you're protecting all that soft tissue and all those joints. Another question came in from John it says, Hey, Sean, appreciate your perspective on Ninja. What are one or two of the best recovery methods in your opinion to help with the physical strain put on the body from Ninja examples, foam rolling, cryotherapy, massage guns, and so on. That's awesome. Uh, thanks, John. I appreciate the question. Um, I'm going to kind of answer that. One of the best things is to not overtrain, right? Mm -hmm. As a coach, main focus is to make sure we don't overtrain, especially when you have that person that's naturally overzealous. Wants the world champ championship this year. Um, in the reality, especially watching, um, watching, watching Michael Jordan's journey on ESPN right now, love it, you know, the last dance. He didn't get it his first year either, and look at the talent that man has. Look at his journey. So the thing is don't overtrain unrealistically listen to the protocol that's been set and yes this we're pioneering this sport and it's new so right now that standard hasn't been set is this overtraining is this overtraining and in my experience i feel um not enough ninjas hit the driving range they just want to go play golf and i think that's where a lot of people do a lot of damage is they show up they run the course um and then they go <laughs> Um, and my suggestion is guys, don't go play the course, make sure we hit the driving range. You know, where's your two, 300, uh, bags of balls. Don't just go play golf. So, and I always use that analogy cause I'm a golfer, but it's the same thing with Ninja. If you go and you hit the course all the time without worrying about the little muscles, soft tissue is our number one in Ninja, honestly, for injury, especially in the elbow and in the shoulder. So, um, so what, what kind of recovery methods do you recommend? So my favorite, there's a TheraBand and there's a couple videos out and I need to post them later. Um, I really feel that um, uh, golf and tennis elbow will eventually be called ninja elbow, both medially and laterally. Uh, laterally and medially or ninja and ninja just because that's really our number one injury, overuse in that. So I use a uh, myofascial release and um, there's a lot of guns out now that do an incredible job. But for me, they're, 
and I kind of homemade it. <laughs> I had a, a friend who homemade it, but I took, do you know the old uh, conveyor belts that had the metal rollers? Yeah. All right. It gets really deep and it's fantastic. And I found it to be very successful with myself and all my people who I train is I welded in a V two of those and you're able, I'll stand up, you're able to insert your forearm in between those and it gets an incredible, incredible deep massage and really works out that fascia. And for me, a TheraBand with the flex, because it comes with several exercises to flex and make sure you always have elbow adduction. Obviously, if you're abducting that elbow, then you're using that shoulder. You do not want any shoulder at all. You want everything in the forearms. So when you have strict uh, adduction, John, you use that TheraBand, make sure, focus on the eccentric. And that eccentric strengthening of all that soft tissue will help exponentially. Uh, couple that with uh, um, fascia release. And then those, in my experience, have been second to none in recovering. Uh, I've had injuries bilaterally. And since I implemented that personally, and again, I'm 42, way um, older than mo most, and still competing at a very high level, I haven't had an injury at all on my forearms or on my elbows since. So I, I definitely stand by those two, John, for your recovery. Another question from Steve, who's uh, one of our students in our certificate, says, what are you doing to keep up your coaching as things change in sports like Ninja? Do you have conferences, clinics? How do you get that training? Thank you. Um, I love the NSCA. I'm a CSCS from the NSCA, so I love their productions. I'm a nerd with their journals. Um, even if it doesn't apply to my sport, obviously the, bio, the biomechanics somehow can apply. Mm -hmm. uh, the endocrinology definitely applies. My biggest passion is how the body works. So I'm going to, uh, as far as energy systems, phosphocreatine system into anaerobic glycolysis, followed by aerobic gly glycolysis and Krebs cycle. Um, I feel, especially since we're a, an anaerobic sport, um, that's how we need to train. So studying that in all journals allows me to perfect my criteria and my uh, modalities to my specific sport and the system that it needs to train. So NSCA is a huge thing for me. Of course, I like ISSA, NASM, ACE, you know, all the all the main gens. And then, of course, uh, any sports medical journals. And there's a plethora of those uh, I read. Even if it's not CEO worthy, I'm going to read it. Um, I love going. That's how I met uh, Dr. Backhurst is the NSCA um, uh, conference. So, um that's pretty much the main is I love reading the medical journals. Are there any specific um, ninja clinics that, that you can go to? Unfortunately, there's not. From my understanding, I know that I, um, I presented the first recorded mm -hmm. ones uh, here in Oklahoma. I really, my passion is I want to, to be one of the main pioneers to get this accredited to and I'm, and that's why I love opportunities like this. Is, um, I'm like, I'm like this in the whole, in the whole world of ninja, right? And the whole goal is to get that perfect team through collaboration. Um, uh, and I guess this is the perfect time. One of my notes here is whatever religion, whatever belief system you are, uh, whether it's prayer, fasting, meditation, uh, focusing. But is really for me is faith based in prayer and fasting to make sure the right people come into your life and get that perfect team. And I'm really thankful because I've had uh, the people who have the strengths that that I don't have. And that's what makes the good team is I'm good at C and D and I need an amazing A and B and an incredible E and F and everyone else. And and that's what I'm really that's what I've found. And I'm looking to find those right other letters and pieces to make this a sanctioned sport and to get all the medical research so that as we're pioneering this, we finally get there and we can get everything aligned to, to, um, to progress these athletes in the ideal, safest way. 
Let me let me go back to your coaching. One of the interesting things about Ninja Warrior is it's kind of like in many instances the Olympics, where you have this one shot to do something right, and if you don't do it right and you blow it, how many years have you quote unquote wasted? And I, you know, we can debate that's it's right. not wasted, but but it, it all builds up to one moment, and and you can either um, thrive or fail based on nerves. Uh, unfamiliarity with a piece of equipment, uh, you, you know, expectations put upon you, pressure, being in front of TV cameras, things like that. How do you prepare athletes to, you know, almost mentally be ready for a one-time opportunity and take advantage of it as opposed to be scared of it? You know, that's good. And I'll uh, part of being a good coach, again, another Mike Boyle pearl that I love so much is basically – Crushing it as a coach where you crush it and then deferring to the professionals what you need to defer to the professionals. And when it comes to mental coaching, um, I'm looking for that perfect uh, piece of the puzzle to mm -hmm. my team because that's not my expertise. I think that's important. I struggle at. That's, it's important for, to recognize, though, as a coach is that we're not great at everything. Right. And, and it's important to say, you know what, these are the areas I can train you as an athlete for. These are areas that I can't, but let's find the best person to help you with those. Correct. Absolutely. Um, I mean, what, what was it like for you when you went and competed uh, on Ninja Warrior? You said you obviously didn't win. Uh, tell us a little bit about what that experience was like. All right. So, like I said, I was a competitive golfer all through high school. Uh, I've been in athlete athletics my whole life, so I love to compete. Um, I do have anxiety. I do couple that with ADHD and that's not a good, uh, that's not a good recipe for uh, <laughs> middle, middle stability and success and performance. So how I did it in the golf course is I'd always tee off on hole one. I don't care what it was. Par four, par five is going to be a six iron. Mm -hmm. Everyone's watching. I could put a six iron 200, just smoothing it right down the middle. And then after that, the crowd's no longer there. Then I can start playing golf. In Ninja Warrior, you don't have that. You don't have the first hole like you alluded right. to, like you said. So for me, um, there's a there's some books that I've been reading. Obviously, deep breathing, meditation, you know, the common of flex as hard as you can and then relax. Do that to three different muscle groups and then go. So trying to implement all of these strategies that everyone else does. Right now, for me, I'm really immersing myself in Stephen R. Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And habit one has really helped me exponentially because I've realized how reactive I am. And I really, I really want to be proactive so that I can focus on my, on my circle of influence instead of worrying about the things I can't control. And uh, I know the older we get, we're like, wow, I was really dumb back in the day. Why can't I have this? Why can't I have these pearl of wisdoms when I was 17? I could have done so much more. But trying to coach that. And couple that with celebrate your small victories. Mm. You know, think about it. A first ballot Hall of Fame, and this is how I like to say it. A first ballot Hall of Fame failed seven out of ten times at the plate. Not bad at 300. Oh, no, no, no. He failed seven out of ten times, and he's a first ballot guaranteed Hall of Famer. That's how hard. And... We focus so much on the seven out of 10 fails that we're like, whoa, you had a 300 batting average. Same thing with life, same thing with Ninja. So my goal as a coach is like, cool, you got wet. Like I did, I got wet, bad. <laughs> and my mind, I promised my two girls and my kids are my life. Everything I do, I try to bust my tail for my wife and my kids, right? That's my true passion. And I told my girls, I got this for y'all. I'm going to ring the buzzer for y'all. And on the second obstacle, I got wet. And it was bad. I locked up and no one ever showed it because Ninja Warrior run 120 athletes a city and they'll only show because it's an hour, two hour show. They'll only show 20, right? Mm -hmm. They never showed mine, thank goodness. Well, they aired my daughter's um, um, on American Ninja Warrior Junior two weeks ago. And they're like, hey, this is her dad back in Houston. <laughs> Flash, and uh, it was it was 
it was like, oh, well, there it is. But, but just like I tell my kids, I had to tell myself, what did you learn? And if you focus on what did you learn? And that's one thing. Um, I'm not talking about the human. I'm talking about the athlete, Conor McGregor. He was super amazing even when he lost. He didn't water down anyone else's victory. All those right things, right? If I make it about my failure, well, that's not cool because guess what? San Sam that year won, won that, finished the state. So if I'm focusing on me, then let's – so I tell my kids, what did you learn? And let's really focus on who did win and celebrate their moments. Because you know what? Maybe tomorrow's yours. Maybe never's yours. But let's celebrate theirs and focus on what we can learn so that we're celebrating ours later when it happens. Now, looking kind of holistically, you've you've been coaching for, for many years. You've been competing for many years. Some people may be interested in, you know, becoming better coaches. Hopefully, if they're watching this, they are but also getting into a coaching profession, whether it be American Ninja Warrior or disc golf or, or basketball, it doesn't really matter. Based on what you've experienced working with a diverse group of people, what advice do you have for, for those coaches? Um, find a group of people you love more than life. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. that, that's what I found. That's the number one thing I learned when I when I served that two-year mission is love the people. I remember my trainer telling me, Sean, if you love the people, everything's easy. And I feel the same. Don't go into a demographic where you struggle to love, right? You can love football, but not like that type of athlete, right? And I think a lot of people get caught in that. Don't, it's kind of like they say, don't chase the money, you know, chase what you love to do. Okay. Well, spin that this way. Not necessarily chase the sports you love, chase the type of people you love. And for me, that's children. Um, kids are unconditional. They have no clue. Again, <laughs> ah, I'm gonna cry. I'm a crier. <laughs> if you watch that show, you'll I cried every time. I'm like, man, I can't talk so tough because I cry. But if you find the people that you love, you're gonna love what you do. Um, and I think the people is more important than even what you do. Because if you love those people and those clients who come to you, oh my gosh, you're going to do the research. You're going to make sure you're the best. You're going to make sure that every minute and every penny of theirs is invested in the most ideal way because, man, uh, I love them and I know that that, and it's always reciprocated. They can feel that. Yes, there's going to be tough moments. Uh, I've been married this year for 20 years to my wife. Oh my gosh, there's tough moments. But you learn so much and you get through those because obviously my love for her and her love for me is, isn't so same thing in that second, um, follow strict to those principles. Don't try, don't how to say this. I've learned to defer and to just say, I don't know, let me get back to you. I think as a new coach, you feel that you have to have the answers. You feel that you have to fill that dead space, especially since, you know, I'm hyperactive. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's been five seconds. Let me feel it. <laughs> and I've had to learn to just draw back. You know what? You know what, Tim? I don't know. Can I get back to you on that? That's a really good question. I I'm unsure. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Not only is it okay, but it... I found that they love and respect me more. A, it shows humility. B, it shows, oh, wow, he's going to go research that. And then when you come back with the answer, man, that experience is incredible. And it's really bonding. One of the things that I've struggled with as, as a coach is sometimes I want the success of my athletes and coaches that I work with more than sometimes they want their own success. <laughs> and and that that's really hard for me because they don't see what I see in them maybe or they don't see the the potential they have or they don't put in the work that they need to in order to really achieve what they say they want how do you how do you cope with those athletes who may not be your your self-driven internally motivated people who who just get it 
you've got to put that in. And then sometimes they just essentially take it for granted and maybe even walk away from it. How do you, how do you cope with that as a person who cares deeply as you do? Cause it's been, it's been a hard one for me to deal with. You know, that's a, oh my gosh, that's an amazing, uh, um, amazing question because yes, I have the same. I would, I would love to flip the script and say, Hey, so Dr. Beggars, this is my question. And then I'm giving you the same question. Um, I've had to learn and I'm still learning. I don't want to, I don't want to answer this as if I've got it. Um, I've had to learn sometimes put down your darn manual, Sean, and let's go play and have fun. Mm -hmm. Building that, building that relationship of trust is paramount because a, if they don't think you're fun or trustworthy, that relationship's not going to blossom, nor are they going to realize their full potential. Mm -hmm. You know, once they truly develop that love for that, um, then they're going to blossom. Um, the same thing is if they tire or burn out, they're never going to realize the potential. And that's a huge danger, especially in this state with softball and baseball. Early child specialization is really doing a disservice to a lot of these kids. So for me, especially when I know I'm getting one of these athletes, I'm like, Sean, you just let that kid have fun. They're pitching and they're hitting and they're hitting that driving range on their other sport. They just need to unwind and have fun. And hopefully in so doing, maybe they stay committed to their baseball or softball because they've had that play fun time. Mm -hmm. So for me, I have to suppress that. I've had to do it with my own kids too. Um, this will be the first generation in the Mason household that's not going to be an MVP in high school and golf. I was, my brother was, my dad was, my grandfather. So I'm like, oh no, <laughs> um, what? but I've had to be like, it's okay. Cause mm -hmm. I'm definitely not going to get it if it's me. Right. And that's something I learned from watching, I think Phil Jackson. And again, watching this, I was like, wow, I've got so much to learn from even Phil and what he did. He allowed Dennis Rodman to go crazy out in Vegas. I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong, but what he's saying is he allowed them to be them instead of did they fit the coach Sean mold of the day? Mm. They didn't fit this mold. And I see, I see what you don't see. When are you going to wake up? Well, heck, I'm going to lose them. Because mm. guess what? I've lost every single athlete where I, I'm like, you got a world. Heck, I had one that won the world championship in the UNA season one. And then I lost him. And I'm like, whoa, what? Because he was he was the same age as my son, and they were both in the finals. And he won, and my son fell. And I'm like, it's tough. At the same time, it's cool because it's still our gym, you know, and like, yay. Mm -hmm. But then I lost him, and I'm like, whoa, what? Not only did he have the potential, he already crushed it. Now we're looking at a repeat. So I think the answer, and the only way I know how is a long-winded way, sorry. It's sometimes just sit back, Sean, and have fun with these kids because you can gain so much skill by just having fun. Mm. Mm. It's, a, it's a great answer. Um, if somebody wants to reach out to you, get more information, contact you, have questions, um, I, Instagram the best way? It is, or honestly, I don't mind get on this format. I don't mind giving them my cell. I'd love for I'd love to talk to them and then reach out. So, uh, Instagram's fine. They can obviously hit me up and ask for my cell on that as well. Um, one thing I'd like to add, Ninja Warrior. I'm telling you guys, it's it is the most rewarding thing that I've done as a career. Um, it's taken a long time to build. Obviously, it's new. Uh, it's nice because, like I said, we have the show driving it. It's super excuse me, it's super fun. And I think, and I feel that's why it's one of the fastest growing sports in the world because it's predicated upon playground fun. Mm. And kids need that, especially now. Kids need to be kids. And with our helicopter society and the way we're going, because we see all of this crime, not saying whether crime's more or less now, we just see it more for sure, right? So we're all helicopter parents. That's why, I mean, heck, even didn't you go and ride your bike and then come home at dark and your mom was like, cool, because she knew you were coming home every night? 
kids don't get that. And ninja gyms are the way that kids can go ride their bike in an incredibly safe environment. And I love that. I love that good, wholesome playground fun is being restored. And also, if you would like, you can also be a professional athlete in this fun playground, too. Sean, thank you so much for giving us your time and, and sharing your expertise. I, I really do appreciate it and hope people do get in touch with you if they have more questions. Well, the honor's mine. Uh, seriously, I am uh, super thankful for you having me on and I would love to help anyone that has questions. It's been incredibly rewarding and thank you so much. My pleasure. Just a reminder as well, coming up tomorrow, Miriam Hartzler will be talking about basketball at the university level. She's the head coach at Cairn University. So you hope you join us tomorrow at 11. But on behalf of myself and Sean Mason, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Have a good one, Tim.